This is the light which shall give revelation to the Gentiles. The mystery of God in the world for the salvation of the world. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Jordan Pacheco. And I'm Bertie Carlos. This is the Glad Chad Podcast, the only podcast in the world that exists because we've just signed a law to make all other podcasts illegal. <laughs> That's right. This is the only podcast that has the official mandatum seal of the Vatican. Don't uh, fact check that at all, but uh, you know, just take our word for it, all right? Yeah, yeah. don't talk to Bishop Barron about that one, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, how are you doing, Rudy? I feel like it's been forever since we've done an episode it has. together. It has been forever. I apologize. Uh, life is crazy over here. You know, the Carlos household just keeps changing and changing and changing, and I have to constantly adapt. Uh, I'm in a new uh, house now, so I... I moved away from our apartment. It was a, whew, it was a crazy experience there. Uh, in short, it was infested by roaches, and we couldn't do anything about it. So uh, yeah. eventually, you know, we got to the end of the lease. We left. Now we're in a bigger house, safer neighborhood. Everybody's happy. But boy, I got to tell you, Jordy, you know, moving every year for the past four years has been tough. You know, yeah, I know. Packing up and getting going. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and Ashley Ashley is uh, pregnant with our second uh, our baby. I think I've mentioned that before, but our godchild. Thank you very there much. There we go. Yes, Jordan and, and Jen are the the godparents, but she's pregnant, so I couldn't uh, I couldn't rely on her for help to to move any of these things. It's not safe. So it was like moving the whole thing solo, and I, I had a little help here and there, but poof, it's tough. But here I am. Thanks be to God. And hopefully we can uh, we can do some more stuff on a more regular basis, at least. <laughs> That's right. There's a question. Are you seeing any cockroaches in your new place? You know what? I, I saw one yesterday. <gasps> one one out of a whole month, though. So that's a very big difference. And actually here in Houston, it's it's a lot more common to see bugs like that. Yeah. So I would say that wasn't really like any indication of an infestation or anything like right. that. People, people forget this <laughs> if they don't live in these parts of the world, but in more humid kind of climates, so Los Angeles is like this. Never mind the fact that Los Angeles is just a dirty city anyway. Uh, but what's interesting about it is that out here in Colorado where I'm at, I've never seen, I'm so serious, I've never seen a cockroach in the wild. Now we have wolf spiders here, so maybe that's a factor. But in a How more humid those? climate, yeah. Oh, dude, wolf spiders are wolf spiders are funny, but they're really nasty. You wake up in the morning and you'll turn on your bathroom light, and they'll be in the bathtub. Do they go? Oh, that's right. They're like, like all eight legs. Like, they say, hey. oh, and they scramble. They look like there is. I'm gonna I'm gonna post a picture right here. That is a creature from Dark Souls Three. It's like <laughs> oh, no. this like weird wolf spidery thing. Of thing, you know what I mean? That's what it looks like. <laughs> as long as it's not a Campbell spider. You know, oh lord! Right. Oh, oh poor poor Iraqi soldiers. <laughs> <for> that thing. <laughs> poor Iraqis, man. They had that's, that's a right. daily basis thing. Man, no wonder they're such a no wonder they're such a disagreeable peoples. You know, why, why wouldn't you be when you have when you have all that happening? <laughs> well. Glad with you, Jordy. You, yeah, dude. So let me see. Um, Jen and I are doing well. Happy Advent. Happy Feast of Mac at Conception, uh, by the way. Yes. Um, be to God. We'll be doing uh, Eternal Rest. That project I've been working on for the Augusta Institute for a year and a half has officially dropped. So um, I'm going to make a shameless plug to our people because I'm extremely proud of it. I think it's extremely important for Catholics and non-Catholics to watch. We, I've had some non-Catholics watch it. Um, so it, it's a really good series to get people into thinking about um, the perspective on death. So if you have a form subscription, it's essentially free through maybe your parish, most likely your parish, but certainly a parish near you. So I'd highly encourage you to please go check that out if you can. Um, shameless plug over. But uh, otherwise than that, dude, I've just been trucking along, man. It's been a, it's been a good advent. And um, we uh, Jen's birthday is coming up, so I got some schemes. And uh, I know, huh? I know. So we're going to see if she keeps me around. And also, um, we're <laughs> headed to a, a gala. Uh, my little sister works at a like a private uh, she works for a private jet company and they're having like a gala. Oh, wow. And I did so much video work for her that uh, essentially we got free tickets. Thank God. So, wow. Yeah. So, the that's t- fun. Mm-hmm. So, it's going to be a good time. Be a good time. I would have happily gone to the Bella Gala up here, which is, of course, the Catholic, uh, main Catholic pregnancy and fertility center up here in Denver, but they didn't invite me. I'm just kidding. It's fine. Mm. All right. No, I'm just, Bella? Blacklisted. Yeah, that's right. Bella, if you're hearing this, no sponsor. I'm just kidding. That's totally James not James Revenge, get him. Just oh, kidding. Lord. Speaking <laughs> of, oh, gosh. Oh, man. So <laughs> we're going to go down a that rabbit hole. Joke. Right there, well, that was a yeah, horrible joke. It's a, You bad. know what? Yeah, that's right. Good on you. a little you. too dank. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, you know, there was a, a a recent letter that was posted to a Newman Center. I can't remember what city. I think it might have been St. Louis or something yeah. like that. And uh, they were like, "Hey, we're coming for you, and we have our brand new AR-14s." And I was going to report it on Catholic Drive Time because you know we we deal with the news and stuff, but. Yeah. I, I saw the letter and, and it said AR-14 and I said, that's a joke. That's not a real, that's not a real platform. So anyway, you know, but jokes aside, there are a lot of attacks on pregnancy centers. So you do have to be careful if you're uh, associated with any of these pregnancy centers. That's right. And we're grateful to Catholic Drive Time for reporting that kind of stuff. Jordan said in a shameless plug <laughs> towards his buddy. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think today, and this kind of actually ties into the thing we wanted to really talk about today because um we're in such a weird era right where news is instantaneous and reactions instantaneous and it's good yeah. that we can have information like this and perspective and these sorts of things but man dude i mean it's very easy like you read like that kind of thing we're coming with our air 14s and it's like okay well what's the legitimacy of this stupid thing like that's yeah. weird you know what i mean but beforehand you might have a million two million clicks on something that's not true um, especially in light of uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter and releasing mm -hmm. the whole Hunter Biden cover ups and all this other kind of stuff. And everyone kind of knew this stuff was happening. But social media in general is is a very interesting kind of phenomenon. It's uh, I think that we, we obviously know this one could argue that YouTube is a social media platform. And um, I don't think anyone would argue that a podcasting site is quite a social media platform like we have for, mm -hmm. for our other listeners. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. And so today, especially in the season of Advent, I think we wanted to kind of unpack good social media, bad social media, um, especially with the Catholic light, because there are a lot of, what I would say, decent Catholics, good Catholics, who get sucked into a weird social media bubble. Yeah, especially Twitter. You know, what's interesting about Twitter is uh, it's it's meant to be, and, and Elon Musk has talked about this before. I think it was, it was one of the, the big reasons why he decided to purchase it is because Twitter is meant to be the the sort of town hall. I think that's that's the way that he put it. It's the town hall where people can share their ideas and supposedly, you know, he wants to to make it a place where all kinds of ideas are being shared, not just the ones that are are mainstream or, you know, um but that that aren't quote unquote uh, harmful to to people. And so, you know, these these places are meant to be open spaces of conversation. But however, at the same time, especially with Twitter or even Instagram, really like the comments section in, in, in Instagram, is you find that uh, people really just want to share their their particular opinion on these on these places. And it's not a place where you can actually retaliate or rebuke or uh, refute some of the ideas that are on there because of uh, on Twitter, like character limits or on Instagram. It's, it's just not the, the the purpose of the platform. And so it's it's difficult for us to, as Catholics, to jump into these different platforms and expect to uh, make a sort of impact on there. I'm not saying that you can't make an impact on there, but I, I think we get into the wrong idea of like trying to use these uh, these places as uh, as the unique place of evangelization. Uh, I was talking with my boss about this the other day, you know, we, we kind of have a, a conversation about this every every couple of weeks or so, because, you know, what we do on Catholic Drive Time, at least is, is what we, we want, what we want to do with Catholic Drive Time is what I'm trying to say is, we want to use and leverage all of these social media sites to be able to spread the gospel because our show is not just the breaking news. I mean, we look at the news from a, from a Catholic perspective, but also we share the gospel. We share the saint of the day. We share commentary on the gospel and all these different things. However, that tends to be uh, very difficult to do when we try and use these social media platforms because we find ourselves being blacklisted. So we come back to this conversation a lot. I know this is getting a little long winded, but we get we get back to this conversation a lot where we get frustrated with the process. And then we realize that despite the fact that there's uh, impediments to what we're trying to do, which is just spread the good news of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, despite the fact that that we're, we're facing these walls with the social media companies is that at the end of the day, we still have to spread the gospel. So how do we do that, right? I mean, uh, I think it's very it's very important for us to to have this conversation and say, you know, maybe it's not just the social media platforms uh, that that are are con conductive to these sorts of conversions. 
or to sharing the gospel message. You know, I think that's extremely insightful. It's very interesting to me that if you go back 200 years ago, let's say, um, mm. say, um, and a little bit before 200 years ago, because I'm talking like the Federalist Papers and Anti-Federalist Papers, right? The idea of discourse being uh, occurring on these long pamphlets, right? These tomes mm. of, of disagreement and agreement to kind of suss out a very deep hot button issue. We have reduced that in our present era to 140 characters or less, or a, a YouTube short, or you know, an Instagram reel or something like this. And Lord, we're gonna get to TikTok later because if you wanna be owned by the Chinese <laughs> government, you will continue having a TikTok. I, <laughs> I gotta get um, rid of my account. I don't use it anymore, but I hear they can still access your information. So. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Tom, 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 well, and it's funny too, and I'll get on it when we talk about the perils, I think, because TikTok in particular is interesting because being owned by foreign entities means that there are things that are happening in Western civilization via platform that isn't happening on that platform's mainland. Um, yeah. As far as it kind of concerns, what's interesting about Catholics and Twitter or well, I use Twitter in particular because obviously there are a lot of very, very sensible commentators across the Catholic uh, kind of spectrum, so to speak. Um, who, who have long form stuff, a lot of podcasts, right? A lot of their own shows and these sorts of things. And it's really kind of cool to just go through them. That's why I like YouTube so much because it's like, you can just click on on a video, an hour long video from the guys at Crisis Magazine or the guys at One Peter Five or Catholic Drive Time or anybody really, Taylor Marshall, like whatever it is, Matt Frad. And you can kind of just go through and like hear kind of what exactly they think. But it's hard to kind of condense these very big ideas down into into such a short form thing or a meme, right? And we love memes a lot, but obviously there's a, a bit of a meme is that you kind of have to be willing to know that there's something deeper than just the five words and a picture on the page, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, take something with Pope Francis, for instance, right? There's a lot of, um, there's obviously a lot of very serious conversation about uh, obligations to a particular Pope, the statements of the Pope. And some of these things take very deep analysis, right? Um, it's not, it's not, productive certainly in the catholic world and certainly i don't think it's necessarily healthy to always be on a um pope bad today lol kind of track right and so if you reduce the holy father's um standing to that kind of thing we have to be very very careful about doing that i'm not i'm not making i don't think an unjust justification of some of the actions of pope francis but um you know that's why i think long form or at least a more more nuanced commentary is very very important when it comes to the actions of of the pope that we find highly disagreeable and dubious at best hashtag answer the dubia so <laughs> <laughs> but for but for a lot of people i think that one of the big things with social media and even and even we're always careful on right is that there's there's always a matter of hubris there's a matter mm -hmm. of, of spreading the gospel. Some people are more effective and efficient at spreading the gospel. Some people are just generally more likable than other people's, right? Um, we always want to be careful about putting the the message before the median. Um, yeah. But there's an important kind of aspect of just going like, why do people, I mean, there is a gratification. We know this from our own show here and our other kind of work. Like there's a gratification, obviously, of people listening to you because it helps you kind of have a reinforcement that maybe what you're saying is valuable to somebody else, right? And so we're appreciative of that. Like we have, we have, I think we have a, a great amount of subscribers on, on, on here on YouTube as well as our our different podcasting sites. We're grateful for each and every one of you. Um, but the the trade off is therefore that we don't think okay, so now we're the authoritative traditional Catholic perspective in the world because we have some people listening to us, um, right? And you know, <laughs> and it's and it's it's not. I think, I mean, our subscribers will tell us if we if we threaded the needle or not thus far. Um, mm -hmm. But I've seen some other I've seen some other people's right. They kind of they get a little big for their britches and they you know they kind of flaunt it. And it's like ah, you don't want to do that because like how is that conducive to the gospel message? You know, Catholics have this beautiful line where you can be influential of sorts. That God does utilize people for the sake of His influence, and also people are just sometimes really good at just doing that. And that's a talent. And God bless channels and people who are far bigger than we are. Um, and a, a, there are those of them who, who are very good about their humility and some of them who actually haven't replied back to our emails on shows and these sorts of things, or have taken our memes and not, uh, not given us credit. And so you're like, okay, <laughs> come on. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a very difficult balance, particularly if you're using, if you're trying to, um, 
to leverage these sites to to spread the gospel or to just be Catholic, right? I mean, uh, identity is at the very heart of what we are. So it's not like we're just Catholics on Sundays. We, we even in our own uh, social media platforms, want to exude and present a, a an authentic Christian life, a lifestyle, right? Um, but I think it's dangerous sometimes with social media, if you're using it as a, you know, as a, uh, I'm going to use the word influencer in quotes and in, in scare quotes, if you're trying to be an influencer on, on any sort of, uh, social media platform, the, the, the trouble with that is eventually you do get a, a listenership and some people like you, like you said, Jordan, some people get really big. And I wonder sometimes if not, uh, if it wasn't, if it wasn't the, the really big talking heads in the Catholic sphere that are responsible for something like Tradicionis Custodis, mm. you know, the traditional movement had gotten so much uh, headwind, so much attention and, and has created so much of uh, like a, um, it's almost like a contradiction, right? Not, not on our part, not because we, we want to contradict or anything. It's just, the, it's the, tr it's the traditional question, right? Like all of these people are going to the Latin mass. All of these people are wanting the, the tradition of the church. They're not wanting this, uh, this construct that's from the sixties. Right. And it's creating this question. Well, who are these people? And, and they, you know, the people uh, in power go and look and, and see, oh, well, this is what a lot of the traditionals are talking about. And, and, and they look at the big heads and they say, wow, these, these people are talking about some crazy things. And I wonder if not our discourse could have been better. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to like, you know, blow anybody's spot up here, but I just wonder if our discourse could have been better on certain topics, uh, not, not the shotgun approach. Uh, and maybe we wouldn't have had something so severe as Tradicionis Casitas because where did it come from, right? I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't like I mean, we we had some more in Pontificum. It it was fine. It was relatively unknown for a very long time, and then all of a sudden, there's this this complete, you know, 160, 360 degree turn where it's like, okay, no, the Latin Mass is bad. It's banned. So I wonder sometimes if it wasn't the discourse that we were having in our, our conversations that has uh, uh, influenced the people at B, you know, the, the Pope or whoever's around him that helped him draft such a document. It's funny you say that. You know, actually, I'm going to take maybe a slightly contrary viewpoint. Um, I, I honestly think that there's an overblown. So discourse is very important there's some very unhealthy ones in the catholic world like obviously like there's there's mm -hmm. some very mean things that people say about other things and i'll i'll drop it flatly right now like what happened between um um restoring the faith and church militant that was an ugly thing to look at in real time yeah like was. that was that was the that was a complete bereft of charity on both of their parts and i'm not i'm not going to say who started it but um i think that they both engaged in just completely uncatholic behavior and so it's really strange to to have two uh, very Catholic cultural um, commentators, right, in their different kind of spheres, kind of meet up in a very hostile environment. And and one of them wasn't big enough to be like, okay, wait a second, this is kind of, this is not something that's probably productive. There's a difference between disagreement, you know, and there's a difference between like, like you know, I'm sad that, that Taylor Marshall and Timothy Gordon went their separate ways. TNT was one of the reasons I really got into the trad movement. I remember that was like big thing for summer of shame. Um, but I don't see a lot of pot shotting there, which I, I'm actually really appreciative of because I, I don't think that's very productive or healthy. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a difference between like proper kind of critique and then just this like hubristic overload that happens. What I was going to get to, however, is I actually think that with the idea of Tristan's custodes, um, I'm very flat that there was an entire generation of clergy that genuinely hate what came before. And I think that Pope Francis is part of that. I think that's, I think that's deep in liberation theology. I think that's deep in him in, in, in the contemporary Jesuit tradition. So, I mean, every time I hear one of these, these bishops or the Holy Father himself or, or whoever say, well, the problem is these like mean trads online and they've caused this division and there's this divisiveness. I go, well, this thing has been happening for decades at this point. And one of the, one of the, tricky things, of course, with Catholic social media. But one of the good things I think is that a decade ago, there weren't voices that made you feel like, oh, my little Latin mass is not just like alone on a on a hillside somewhere. 
like yeah, there were, you had there were, uh, mm-hmm. you had a newspaper maybe yeah you you know, yeah like exactly the remnant. Like, god bless the remnant right because yeah. i mean they kept the the candle going god of remnant fatima center right they're just these yeah. these little pockets that you just go wow like for real we talked to we talked to uh tom massey right um down in australia like there's these times where traditionalists really felt alone and yeah. so i'm happy I, I i'm not actually i think that again a lot of criticism has to be kind of dialed back to a to a point where we have to remember caritatis and everything right but i'm also very clear that the criticisms are are very valid a lot of times these people had everything ripped away from them or like us they've discovered the richness of the fullness of the faith and then they're immediately told that they're radical and that they're mean for pointing out that they don't want to go to a mass with uh tambourines something stuck in the 60s as you said Mm -hmm. um so i think that i honestly think that Catholics, we were voting organically with their feet. The Latin Mass is an exponentially growing part of the church. It's only really the only growing part of the church in the West. Yeah, to be honest, right? Um, and it's we there. We've done episodes on this, right? And I think that regardless of if if the church ran itself a little bit more business savvy, ironically, then they'd go, okay, this is a good thing to cultivate because at least this means for men who don't care about the faith, at least it means financial stability and security, right? But this is a matter of, of faith. This is a matter of liturgy. And I, I find that that men like the Holy Father and that, that men like like um, Cardinal Roche and those other kind of guys, they just genuinely hate it. They, they've never gone and they don't like it because they know what it represents. It represents a lack of of humanistic power for them, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I think traditionalist custodians would have come even if trads were really, really nice because we were, we're growing like this. And you have mm-hmm. to put the ban hammer on something down that's going to uproot the entire philosophy of the past 70 years. Um, and that's what we're up against. So that's that's one reason why, even when it comes to like kind of hardcore discord in, in the Catholic world on questions of liturgy and questions of theology and these sorts of things, I have we have obviously seen a lot of commentators who are unapologetic about what they believe, um, mm-hmm. but are but are good about getting their point across without being like overtly just kind of, you know, crapping all over the place you know yeah and i think that's very important so i think you know everybody knows where where we stand on that particular subject right on the on the latin mass on I tradition hope they do at this point you know i hope so um the, the 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 thing that remains though is like you said it's the it's the traditional catholic mass or rather the tradition question i'm just going to make it a i'm going to make it an amalgamation it's mm-hmm. the traditional question you know when when the new mass came around and the, the the people who remained and did not want to follow and 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 didn't didn't think that that was good for souls i mean we're just barely uh, seeing the effects of that you know this is this is i mean we've seen it with tra- traditionalist custodians i mean the Latin Mass is going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to to grow because it's it's the best. It gives God the most glory. However, when we have these conversations, and I think this is what I left out when I presented this this uh, sort of idea, is that, and this is something we do on the show. We struggle with on the show really most of the time because we're all traditionalists. I mean, at least us on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, is how do we? convince people to go that way right because oftentimes what happens with our, our our brothers and sisters who have not ever participated in any sort of traditional latin mass they don't know anything about it they are presented with this false dichotomy that it's it's like oh the traditional latin mass is bad it's bad and anybody who goes to that is being rebellious and disobedient and so how do you convince these people to like think about the other things, right? How do you how do you get them to think about tradition? How do you get them to understand that the Novus Ordo sometimes is very deficient, you know, inherently in the way that it was drafted? Obviously, you can't go out there with a shotgun approach because these people automatically shut down. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of uh, the thing I was trying to get at here is is that the way that we discuss these things is really important, and I I think that. I think you're right, Jordan. I mean, eventually it would have come to toes, you know, uh, it come to a head, I think is, is what the, the term is. Eventually they would have, they would have banned it somehow because the traditional question remains, right? Kind of like the Jewish question, but that's for a different conversation altogether. 
but these things they they remain right it's a question it hasn't been answered and and so um anyway when it comes to to these these sorts of um social media platforms and it's very easy for us to like go and do the shotgun approach and you see it too jordan uh, you know right before we started filming you mentioned uh, all of these really immaculate accounts, these sorts of accounts that are uh, created by uh, housewives or certain Catholic guys that, that go on social media and they have these like immaculate presentations of what their life looks like. And you wonder sometimes you're like, is that real? You know, is that is that for real? Like you have 10 kids and your house is perfect. That doesn't make any sense. I right. have one and, and my house is a disaster most of the time. You know, so I wonder sometimes if like, we're, we're really moving the needle with what we do on social media. That's, that's a good, that actually pivots to a really, really good point because I think this Catholic lifestyle thing, I'm, I'm, that's not quite our sort of charism. Now I do like, I do like these cottage industries that have popped up on, on Instagram, right. And Facebook. And I love, I love these kind of small Catholic and Catholic oriented businesses for people making candles or veils or whatever. Um, that's cool. And I'm a huge fan of that and continue it happening. I like, I think it is important. There are, there are some channels on YouTube that I'm fond of that are like, you know, Catholic housewives or just kind of living like a Catholic life with your spouse. And I feel like some of them are, are genuinely authentic, right? They talk about struggles and challenges. That's something I think that we've just, because we're just normal jabronis, normal trads, right? I think we've kind of just organically put that across. <laughs> like we've, we've been very clear. Not artistic is, trads. Yeah, we're not artistically <laughs> trad, right? But because marriage is difficult and like you're a father on top of that, like it's, it's difficult. I couldn't imagine having like a social media account running on like the happiness of the Catholic happiness of the Pacheco household, because there's always something that, we, you know, there's always something. And it's like, not all of it is, is, is can be handled uh, quite the way that we ought to handle it. You know what I mean? Like right. next And so when you look at these accounts, this is kind of a danger, right? Where the point of people posting is there's a kind of comparison of view. Now, there are good comparisons, like the saints, for instance, or the holy family, or things that are just objectively true. Um, mm -hmm. Saints Louis and Zelie Martin, right, the first canonized married couple, probably a decent household there, um, mm -hmm. although they probably they were also human too, so, you know, who knows what that entails. But I, I find that this really dangerous part of social media is this comparison worldview that we get. And it's really unfortunate. I think it's really unfortunate, particularly for women. Um, they'll tell you quite oh, yeah. flatly, right? Like this kind of social pressure that they get to to be a certain way or to perform. And then if you're not quite as happy, you don't look as pristine or any of this kind of stuff that you're letting yourself down or worse, you're letting God down or something like this. Um, I mean, it, I've seen and I've seen it, you know, in my own house, like, you know, kind of just like watching the effect of these sort of things be like, that's not actually good. Mm -hmm. um for people this isn't act and this isn't calling people to deeper holiness if people yeah. are just beating themselves up unnecessarily because their kitchen isn't pristine we should mm -hmm. strive for such things but but kind of in, um injecting ourselves with this constant stream of of perfection on earth which is of course an oxymoron yeah. doesn't make any sense i think for a lot of people yeah and, and and to speak to this, uh, this term, uh, it's such a visceral term, this injection of content that you just mentioned, you know, it doesn't help you either to be online 24, seven, 25, eight, you know, like almost every single moment of your day, you know, these devices are in our hands and we're just looking at, at constant streams of just randomness. Right. I mean, uh, I've seen it in our own personal family life on both sides. So I'm not going to be the one to tell you that I don't ever do that because I still have trouble with that. But mm -hmm. I can tell you that it definitely gets in the way of our duties most of the time when I'm, you know, I'm on my phone all the time. I mean, to a certain extent, I have to be on my phone, you know, to, to keep up with, with work and, and all that sort of stuff because yeah. our schedules are very, very different on the radio, um, you know, we just have a very different looking day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get up really early, we do the show and then like pretty much all the way up from eight to noon or to 1 PM, it's, it's a lot of just kind of like hustling and trying to get the next day sorted out. So there's, there's an aspect of having to out of necessity for my work, but at the same time, you know, if you let yourself be excused in that way, you find it very easy. I found it very easy in my life to just constantly scroll on Instagram. And, mm -hmm. and at the, at the end of the day, you know, I remember having this thought just a few months ago, I was thinking, you know, 
I don't feel like I have a lot of freedom at this moment. Like I'm, I'm attached to my phone. I'm looking through all these different social media platforms. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, uh, I'm on Twitter. Sometimes I, I look at Facebook pages, even though I don't have a Facebook, because you can do that with cer certain meme, yeah, meme pages yeah. and stuff. And I, I was just thinking, I was like, I don't feel very free. You know, I, I feel like I have things to do and I keep telling myself I don't I don't have time to do it, but then I have plenty of time to just scroll around and and look at all of these different people's like lives, all these different projects that I'm never gonna be able to actually finish. And it really detracts from your vocation, especially for me as a father. I'm like a father and a husband, I'm just like, can I can I really can I really say that I'm doing a really good job right now? Like when I could do so much more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has that ever, like, has that been your experience at all? Yeah, I mean, heck, like, <laughs> just I feel I feel guilty now because just this morning I found a uh, I live in Parker, Colorado, and there was a Wildlife of Parker Facebook page I just saw. So oh, spent, nice. Jen was asleep here, so maybe that's my cover. But I was like just scrolling, <laughs> looking at like these, these like great horned owls and oh, elk wow. that pop up. So you know, maybe I'm unashamed about that. I'm gonna yeah, go dude, to Colorado. I'm, a, I'm kind of happy in a way. So I I'm a I'm a YouTube scroller. That's what I am. I'm like mm. a YouTube content kind of guy. Um, I don't really do much scrolling on social media and even on or, or not social media. I don't really do much scrolling on Instagram um, and I don't really do much scrolling on 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 Facebook outside these kind of like kind of cool forays into like a page or something. But YouTube's like constant. If you looked at my data usage for YouTube, it's always something. Uh <laughs> Aren't the uh, the YouTube shorts like absolutely the worst? Do like, you ever go on the, the shorts and you're just like, what is this? Like, Can I tell you? I want to tell you two things. Is this, is this off, like MK Ultra? Like, <laughs> is this like a psyop or something? Because the content is so bad. I hated them when they started. I hated. I still kind of don't like them. Um, But I did make one for the channel recently and I just figured out how to caption them. So Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, no, right. I'm like, all right. So, I mean, there's always like little blurbs of plot of podcasts and stuff. Not all of it's bad, but I'm just like, wow. Like when, especially since I'm so used to like long form content, I find that more productive. Yeah. Like the also thing about the, my YouTube short feed is that it's, it's unrelated to anything I search for anyway. Yeah. It's so I'm like, random. I'm not going to click on this. It's becoming, it's the other thing. That's why I like, I think if we were three years ago, I wouldn't have said that YouTube is a social media platform. It doesn't quite fit. Um, matters of interaction, I think, is a factor in that. I feel like Shorts is trying to bring that more into the fold. Um, and a lot of it's just like, I'm like, this is just kind of not, this kind of schlock. Someone saw TikTok and got really excited, which speaking <laughs> of, okay, can we can we talk about this real quick? So Let's talk I'm, about TikTok. Oh, Lord. Okay, let's talk about TikTok. First off, I'm going to say um, in the words of, in the decree of Pope Pius the Ninth, if you have a TikTok, you're excommunicado. Pretty Dude. sure he said that. Uh, <laughs> TikTok, you know, is a gigantic, it's a gigantic psyop for it's, sure. You know what? Tell him, Rudy. Tell it's him. It's a psychological right. operation mm -hmm. from on the part of China and on behalf of all of the, the, the legislators who continue to allow it to be here in the United States. I mean, it, it, you could, you could even like bring up the question of like, well, what about free speech? You know, what about access to whatever all this content? You could be libertarian about it, but at the end of the day, it is literally a psyop. The Chinese, uh, uh, the, the Communist Chinese Party who created this application and has exported it en masse to all of these different countries is slowly subverting the minds of all of these young people that go on there. Uh, all of the, the content there is completely tailored to be just destructive to the sanctity of the soul. You could see the uh, the way that things come up like TikTok dances, which oftentimes are just really, uh, really salacious and disgusting things to look at. With uh, children, you, by the way. Should with, mention children, uh -huh. with children, specifically tailored to children. It, it's essentially like softcore, hard, like sometimes hardcore. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, definitely essentially, like soft, it's softcore it's essentially, pornography. It's essentially sure. pornography. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's melting the minds of all of our young people and anybody who goes on there because you you sort of mentioned this already jordan but like if you go if you were to be in china right now and you were on tiktok you would not see any of that stuff that i just mentioned on there it would not be on the forefront you know i i thought about you know when i when i started uh doing that for catholic drive time i i got on tiktok and i was doing short form content to try and and see if we could get an audience there mm -hmm. 
And there's even exorcists now who there's an exorcist who was like, yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go to the, you know, the fringes and I'm going to try and share the gospel on these places. Good luck, father. I, I don't think you're making much of an impact there. Uh, I don't know. I, I, outside of the grace of God, I, mm-hmm. I cannot see how anybody could even have a foothold there because it's just so crazy. But I went on there and the, the first thing that I saw was, I, you know, I wasn't subscribed to anything at all. Absolutely nothing. It was essentially pornography. And, and, and it's, it, it, it's just crazy. Like, like you, you just jump onto this platform and it's pornography. That's, that's subverting the minds of the Western world. Just look at the way the, the E. Michael Jones talks about this. Look at the the way that people are, are enslaved by their passions and, mm-hmm. and all of these these different things like pornography, like that's that's a massive way to to corrupt the Western world and China's exporting it, right. and somehow uh, somehow there's there's parents even Catholic parents who allow their children to be on social media, but specifically on TikTok. That's insane to me. It, it's um, it's dangerous. It's foolish. Yeah. You know? Yeah, my little sister um, will send me a meme or two on TikTok, and I remember, I remember, um, it's always never too long ago, right? Normal meme, kind of like a funny normal meme kind of thing, right? And the next video afterwards is like, you know, some like provocative dance thing. And I remember being like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't think, and I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, again, shameless plug for our own podcast here, but I'm glad that we're very realistic about talking about this. Do you know how difficult it is to get off pornography? Yeah, it was so, so difficult. Yeah, like it sucks. And by the way, you never like even when you're off, it's not like it like, just disappears. You never have like another impure thought and like go and think about your wife ever again. OK, dude, all of those years of being a young guy and yeah. looking at pornography, it does something to your mind. It does something it's to not, your mind. It, it's not like you just turn it off like, you no, know. no, it actually changes your gray matter structure. Stephen Crowder has a great video talking about this. Um, oh, my gosh. And and Matt Frad's the, the porn myth is is fantastic. But um, so it's amazing to me just being like, it, and, and also when you're off pornography for a while, you kind of also, your, your sensibilities kind of come back up, I find so that you're much more sensitive to what is like deliberately sexually provocative, you know, stuff that you might've like passed is not that bad. Once upon a time, if you're really heavily on it, you're just like, oh, wait a second, that's wrong. Also it's children. Did I mention this right now? How is it that in our world today where we're seeing Balenciaga, right? We're seeing all these issues of like child predation. We can't even call them pedophiles or minor attractive persons and all this kind of stuff, right? They keep blending the line. Well, yeah, but what if it's a 15 year old girl? So they call it like, hey, that's still children. And yeah. and it's bled into our society. So here's the thing. Uh, China right now as a government has banned the depiction of uh, emasculated men. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, like butch women, essentially. So mm-hmm. there's no like gay boy ads in China. Russia has also a pretty recently followed suit. Never mind the whole of the Middle East, um, <laughs> obviously. Which I'll just jump in here really quickly. Sorry to interrupt you, Jordan, but but the Western world sees that as backwards for some reason. Yes. And, and- you know, I'm I'm no fan of communist China. I, you know, I don't very I don't know very much about Russia, but I don't I don't think they're like 100 percent the answer or based yeah. or all the time. But mm-hmm. the fact that they're able to do this and get this filth off of like the mainstream airwaves, the where you look, the billboards and everything, like that's actually good. That's good for society. Yeah, that's it's culturally important here. And distinctions in society matter when it comes to these kinds of things. And the problem is that, but look what's being exported to us in real time. Blurred lines everywhere, right? And so now, so much so that if you question, well, dancing or, or clothing or language or anything like that, well, how dare you, right? You're encroaching on some sort of freedom. And never mind the fact that, it's so funny, I was watching over my, my sister was scrolling through TikTok the other day. Um, and, you know, Olivia just kind of has like, I don't know what Olivia's feed all consists of, but I was watching a video that was obviously just like stirring up racial division for no yeah. reason whatsoever. Like I was just, mm-hmm. I was sitting there over and I'm just like, this is just, I was like, this is just bull crap. But of course, if that's the only perspective that you get, no wonder that people are so confused. Like it's, a, it was a contradictory kind of viewpoint. This video was, it was like, um, it was, it was on one hand, it was like white flight is racist but also gentrification is racist. So I'm like, so what do you want people to do? <laughs> like, didn't make any sense, but, but that's being exported. Um, the, oh my gosh, the whole transgender thing, right? An obvious, an obvious social disease with some real world consequences, 
right? These high rates of anxiety and of depression and all this other kind of stuff. Part of this is directly linked to to time spent on social media and how much you allow that to influence you. Social contagion is real. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. It's not the first time in history, but this one's a very potent kind of strain. And um, and I I, I think about this quite deeply because I I know that there are a lot of people who do not have the old obvious cultural and religious constraints to let them know their value, their worth and their place in society. It's important that we live in community. God created us that we not live alone, right? But it's also very important that we realize that we have roles and obligations to ourselves and to society and to God. Um, And so, yes, there is an obligation if you're a man to be a man. And yes, that also includes gender norms and gender stereotypes, obviously. Um, And by the way, even if you shirk off those gender norms and gender stereotypes, it doesn't mean that you're not a man. It just means you're, you know, feminine man, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it's unfortunate because that stuff's being pumped in real time. It's like libs of TikTok will never run out of content. And that's actually a really unfortunate thing. Um, but look at how diseased our society is, right? You just post people spewing their absolute backwards nonsense. And it, it's, it's, I don't, I'm not one of those people who thinks there's a demon under every rock. When I say that this stuff is demonic, I just mean that it is against the obvious order of God. God has created mm. has created creation and man and woman in an orderly fashion. He's created sex and sexuality in a good way to be expressed in the confines of marriage. Um, and when we shirk these whole things off and we have the audacity to say, well, my freedom or my free speech or my freedom of expression or whatever, it's obviously tilting the world towards hell. Yeah, this this liberty that we're so fond of, you know, I've said it before, religious liberty is 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 not really a good thing. You know, it, it uncrowns our blessed Lord Jesus. But it, people here in, in the Western world are obsessed with this concept of liberty. And they think that 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 is it allows them to just do whatever they want or to to see whatever they want or to live in any particular way. But in reality, this liberty is really destroying their relationship with God because they don't know they're they're you know they don't know what they're made for they don't know what what their their humanity is for they don't know how to interact with other people they just suck up all of these different ideas that they get on social media i I find it funny that you brought up the the racial division thing jordan because uh, the other day i was on on instagram and instagram really is just like a recycling place for TikTok videos because people you know they cross post to these places Mm -hmm. so you see oftentimes a lot of the same sort of things on on instagram that you would on 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 TikTok. and it was this video of uh this woman who on the surface appeared to be like i don't know maybe white or something and she was climbing this pyramid uh in in mexico or i don't know maybe guatemala i don't know Mm -hmm. isn't it weird by the way as a little aside that like all of these different pagans created pyramids it's almost as if they had like some sort of (laughs) some sort of connection here to like the demonic or something there we go get it maybe it's too much of a stretch but anyway this woman was going up the stairs right and everybody there's a crowd underneath because you know all the tourists they want to see these places even though they they, even though like these places were actually literally like demonic battlefields where they were chopping people's hearts out and tumbling down the the side of the pyramid and Mm -hmm. it's just bloodlust and bloodlust everywhere they they want to go see these places for some reason and so this crowd they get into a frenzy and they're like whoa this woman she's going up the stairs the disrespect to the pyramid of all things the disrespect to the pyramid and to the people and you see the comments and it's all the same thing you know like oh i can't believe it these white people that come here and they think it's well it turns out that this woman's actually not white she was mexican and and i'm going through the comments and i'm just thinking to myself you know there's so much of like the same idea here i want to put something a little contradictory here just to get them thinking about Uh-oh. what this is Uh oh and so i said you, you know all the lad. people the, <laughs> all the people cheering this on and saying you know she got what she deserved because she they ended up like throwing water at her and just like shaming her publicly i don't think she was very ashamed which i don't think you should be anyway because in the girl. 70s they allowed you they allowed you to go up the pyramids anyway in the 70s so it's a recent thing um i don't think she was being disrespectful but I, I commented and i said all these people that are that are are frenzied and 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 uh talking about this disrespect to the pyramid and to the people are the first ones who would have been sacrificed on these pyramids and tumbled down the side of them. 
And I got all these crazy people commenting on this. Like, Are you a white supremacist? I'm like, what does that have anything to do with what we just talked about? What does that have anything to do with the context of this conversation here? Which is that this is this is not a good thing. That that we're 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 looking at this pyramid as if it was some sort of idol. Like, oh, mm -hmm. we have to respect it. What? Like, are you crazy? These are the kinds of ideas that we find so often in social media and, and why I think we're taking a, a sort of a stance to say that these platforms are a little bit dangerous. They're subversive to, to the Western world. They're subversive to most people because they don't have any sort of thought, any way of, of actually articulating any sort of thought that they're seeing. They see these comments and they say, yeah, yeah, they agree with them and they internalize them yeah. and then they go and then they vote with 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 these concepts in mind and that's why we're seeing so much division here in the world it, it bothers me that we can't have any sort of discourse anymore I, I don't think i could have this conversation with my family back home mm. you know i could have it and then maybe we'll talk about it a little bit but i i think we're at a point where people listen but they're not confident enough to actually say anything no. about what they actually believe in Instead of instead of doing that, they just sort of splurge this. The, they regurgitate this uh, this idea that they find in a comment section somewhere. Hate is it burns. I think hate burns harder than happiness in most cases. Yeah, and but it's also more fleeting. And so I think that's why people. There's some people who go have to go from outrage, to outrage, to out, outrage. See, that's my old speech impediment right there. Outrage. Outrage, outrage to outrage to outrage. I used to I used to not be able to say R's. I'd say things like bear instead of bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's unfortunate. I point love point and laugh. Point and laugh. That's ah, right. Ha ah, ha. Ah. 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 Uh, oh, poor Jordan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I first off, I I always like your your meme lord status. I wish you would have told Anthony and I that because I would love to have seen that thread. <laughs> but also, I think what you say is obviously true. Um, the vast majority of of this is a strange thing. This is why I know paganism is like a dumb thing because the vast majority of people who are saying this is a great disrespect to the pyramids, yeah, are the exact same people who would have been of the lower castes, um, or or oh my gosh, or they would have been just living down the road in a different tribe, and the Aztecs would have bound you up and sacrificed you. This was a real thing, by the way. This is why I've absolutely I have absolutely no um you know, murder is wrong, but in terms of tearing down pagan statues, that's like one of the most Catholic things you can do. We've been doing it for 2000 years. God bless the Spanish for having the, the, the gumption of the faith to tear down these horrible places. And if you think that this was some unfair robbery of culture, can you imagine, can you imagine just coming across regularly right now, looking up and there was like a temple and outside that temple, there were just hundreds of people being lined up to be killed, beheaded and rolled down with their hearts poked up to the sun. So the sun could rise every day. If you just came across that today, Today, you wouldn't be like, oh, well, that's kind of crazy, but hey, I guess that's just their culture. And they're like, oh, they got grandma. And it's, it's all, well, yeah, I know, I know. Now I say that, I guess, with an asterisk every day because this world's getting crazier, I think. Because it actually happens. Here here in Houston, there's, um, well, thanks be to God, here in Texas, that abortion is banned outright. <laughs> Where they pull but, up to uh, here in Colorado. But here in Houston, there's literally a step building. It looks like a step pyramid. And guess who owns it? Church of Satan. Planned Parenthood. Oh, even better. <laughs> so, uh, so you may not see the blood flowing from the mm. building itself, but it's still there. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's that's true. So you know, it's like this is a double-edged sword. I don't think it's good. So the TikTok one, I totally am with you. Um, I don't think it's probably prudent to preach the gospel in a brothel. <laughs> it could happen. I, I'm sure it's happened at some cases. I hope not because the the priest was there uh, in scandal, but. The recommendation generally is to stand outside the brothel and preach the gospel, not go inside the brothel and preach the gospel. Right. Uh, this is how I feel about um, Instagram. My gosh, Instagram's a cesspool too. Obviously, I mean the Insta thought was like a is a real thing. Um, you know, like try try typing in any of your friends' names, and it's just like gosh. So I haven't really, I don't really scroll on Instagram anymore. Um, <laughs> not that my feed's ever been particularly dangerous, but. Um, uh, it's just kind of unfortunate. It's really unfortunate because you kind of see, okay, so how, how are Catholics, how are Christians supposed to meet this place exactly? Are we supposed to? Um, and I'm a huge believer that, listen, take care of yourself and your own soul first. There are some people who should not be on social media. Uh, that's all of us, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, except YouTube and Rumble. There you go. That's all you get. Um, 
but there are also some people obviously who can thread the needle pretty nicely who can who can kind of do their post and i think can, can do it quite splendidly and, and god bless them because that is a genuine skill um and so i think it's an honest frank assessment if you find that your addiction to social media if you find that your love of social media is getting in the way of your duties in an unhealthy way that's a problem obviously if you find yourself comparing yourself to the lifestyles of people who you don't know that's obviously always dangerous if you find yourself adjusting your thought into evil thoughts or um or falling into sin because of social media that's a huge problem and you need to stop you know if you feel like you're just another if you just feel like you're another one of the sheep that feels self-righteous and you're not actually aligned with the truth obvious the truth grounded in faith in reason then that's a problem and i find that i think that um if you find yourself a, cha- a slave to the chinese government that's a problem right so <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah absolutely jordan uh, you know sometimes i think we're preaching to the choir i wonder if, if people actually uh have an opposite idea of, of this particular topic but you know, I, I hope that it, it could be sort of helpful to just kind of wake you up a little bit because sitting there on the scroll is is real. I, I see it all the time. You know, mm-hmm. you, I mean, go to the store, go anywhere. You see people scrolling just in 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 the aisle of the the supermarket. It's yeah. there's something weird here. We're being subverted. You know, and I hate to be a conspiracy theorist about it. Actually. You know, a conspiracy theorist is just someone ahead of the curve, Rudy. 2022 going into 2023, it's almost impossible to be a conspiracy theorist with the way that things turn out. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think this really is a subversion of 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 the population, and we have to be very careful, especially as Catholics, because we do have to worry about our soul. We have to worry about what goes into our 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 our, our body, right? I mean. Nothing evil comes out from our body. It's the things that we bring in. Mm. And so, uh, I'm sorry, I confused the, the message there. It's take two. It, it, evil comes from, from us, from our minds, right? From the things that we, we take in. And so if, if we're just constantly scrolling on stuff, by the way, the, the thing I didn't mention here is at the end of the day, when you're scrolling, and you're finished and you're like wow this is boring and you spent like an hour just going through the feed did you really gain anything from that was there anything really of value in what you just saw i challenge you to 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 sit down and think about that for a minute because i i almost guarantee that you didn't get anything of worth from that time that you invested into social media that you could have invested into your family or into your spiritual life or even into doing like something as simple as an examination of conscience mm. so that you could uh you know prepare yourself for mass or anything like that i mean those things are infinitely more important than the amount of time that we dedicate to these things that really enslave us to our passions no yeah. Yeah, there's this this the matter of the Christian life is one of of proper detachment, mm-hmm. which is to say that that to accept the joys of God in the same kind of vein that we accept the sufferings of God, and part of it is just again realizing that if if our hubris, if our pride, if our ego gets in the way of of our of our roles and our duties as Christians, that's a problem. It doesn't mean that we need to live in a bunker. I think it's always a, a both and thing. It's it, it loves fashion, but it wants modesty, that sort of thing, right? Social media yeah. is not inherently bad. It's not something to, unless you're TikTok and we should get off TikTok, obviously. <laughs> TikTok but, is bad. <laughs> that is bad. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, there is, there are, um, you know, there is a, there's a needle to thread here. Maybe it's as simple as just putting time limits on yourself, you know? Yeah. It might be just as simple as that. It just might be as simple as going, you know, actually these accounts, are these accounts actually giving me, are they making me happy or are they not making me happy? If I'm comparing myself to this person who seems perfect, which everyone, every, they have filters, right? Their entire industry is built around making people look perfect. So I don't know why you would compare. That's a problem. If you feel like you're neglecting your prayer life or, or your reading of scripture or your reading of the holy things in favor of these sorts of things, if you're just not even spending genuine time with your family, I don't, even if it's just something as simple as watching a movie or something, if you're just not spending time as a family because you'd rather scroll yeah maybe we should consider changing our habits considerably um the only uh videos you should be watching on youtube of course come from the glad trad podcast and the only absolutely absolutely obviously and the only podcast for that matter you should listen to 
when you're on Spotify and Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts and everything is, of course, the Garage Trad Podcast. That is, that's essentially the only yeah. on Dotum certified thing that is actually probably giving you grace in real time. Wouldn't you say, Rudy? We give you a dispensation to only watch our content. That's right. And only our content alone. Mm -hmm. Because everything else is bad. Yes. Everything else is going to corrupt your soul. Absolute trash. And you have to have the same ideas that we have, which are officially, uh, they're certified bangers. That's right. I'm going to say instead. instead That's because exactly I, right. Because I can't, I can't find the other word. And, that is uh, the word we're talking about. That is definitely in church documents. And radio life is completely destroyed my mind, and I can't think. Nonsense. Listen, anymore. you remember the conversation? <laughs> Pope Francis flew to to us personally, and he said, "Listen, Glad Trad Podcast. I know we don't always get along." Um, I felt bad because as we were coming in, Cardinal Zen was like waiting, and oh, we were like, no. "Hey, yeah. are you next?" And right. It was like, uh, well, actually. I, my number is actually this. And I thought, well, that's weird because we came in after you because our number is before you. But I didn't think about it too much. Yeah, I didn't anyway, think about it too we're, deeply. We're and now look, there. poor, by the way, we should pray for Cardinal Zen. That is some, poor you want to talk about some actual BS? <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Golly, golly. And, and yet we don't, and we don't even, we don't even talk about it, right? The Vatican. Jordan, did you see the, things. did you see this story? Uh, it happened, I think maybe two or three weeks ago. It was out of life sight. I believe, uh, the story was something like, um, the communist, the, the communist party in China, um, they actually consecrated in, in scare quotes and actual air quotes, cause they can't concentrate, consecrate anybody. Uh -huh. They consecrated a bishop, a party bishop. Mm -hmm. And the Vatican was like, Hey, you weren't supposed to do that. That's actually not very good, man. That's that's against what we what we decided here with this document, the sign of China China Vatican deal here. It's it's not okay, man. So I wonder if they're gonna go after China the way that they went after, say, Archbishop Lefebvre. Yeah, right. Society. Mm. Yeah, are we gonna excommunicate the? Is it automatic excommunication for the bishop in China, or they're just gonna? Obviously. It's completely different because Archbishop oh, yeah. Lefebvre was, was justified and well, he wasn't a communist. But, you, well, uh, no. Are you kidding me? Archbishop Lefebvre <laughs> was a jerk and that's why he was excommunicated because if he only had true. held hands and done the Oran's posture like a good little boy, then... He was uh, a, a meanie poo-poo head. That's right. He's a meanie poo-poo doo-doo head. Uh, by the way, <laughs> remember who brokered the China deal initially? Guess what Cardinal did it? Do you remember? Ooh, I don't know that actually. It, who? I'm pretty sure. No, fact check me, uh, subscribers, but I'm pretty sure it's McCarrick. Oh, that was McCarrick. It's one of McCarrick's wheelhouses. Yeah. Mm. So, ba da ba ba da ba. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I thought you were going to do the McDonald's thing right there. I'm ba -da. loving it. Ba da ba ba ba. Don't go to a beach house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> When I thought I was dank in the, in the beginning yo, of the show. Yo, yeah, you're the one with the Jewish question one in the beginning. <laughs> <midway. laughs> it actually is a question, though. We what is an episode? On what the is the Jewish question? Well, you're you're seeing. Well, it depends on who you ask. How trad do you I, want to be? <laughs> I uh, I think of the Jewish question this way. Mm -hmm. The Jewish question is whether or not you can um, you can make a critique of Jews without being labeled as an anti semite, which is a nothing burger term. It means mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a, effectively a way for you to to shut down the conversation and just just call somebody an anti semite because you're not allowed to criticize Jews. So that's 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 what the Jewish question is. It's it's a kind of a hot button topic because you're seeing it in real time with uh, people like Kanye, Kanye and, West. Uh, Nick Fuentes going up and, and having dinner with uh, the former president, uh, Donald Trump, you know, these these things are coming out again. But that's a question that hasn't been resolved. Mm. Well, I'll tell you a funny little thing. Um, I I love everybody because everyone should convert to the Catholic faith. That's a, that has been that Amen. is a traditional stance. Of course, um, we're not evangelical. So I have a very strange love affair with Israel. I don't I don't get it. Yeah. And I actually I get it by the theology. My buddy explained it to me. Uh, Catholics have a uh, have. Oh, uh, I think, what do they call it? It was like a replacement theology where we think that um, the new covenant and the establishment of the church means that the people of God. We are the new Israel. Exactly. Yeah. The virtue of baptism saves you instead of circumcision. And that virtue in the Catholic church is the one true church, just exactly. as it would have been for, for the people of Israel. While the evangelicals have the sort of covenant theology thing, and maybe it's called lordship theology, um, where um, 
even though like the church exists and God calls us to that, the Jews are still God's chosen people. And so for some strange reason, they'll never say this, they'll be much more meaner to Catholics than they are to Jews because uh, they're, because Jews have this time, this part to play, of course, in Revelation, which is mm-hmm. true. Namely, they're going to convert and build the temple. So that's why we as Catholics pray for them. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say is that Ilan Omar, of all people who I'm not obviously a fan of, made this post once. It was talking about how much money uh, the United States sends to Israel. And she made a post, it, a tweet to talk about social media. It was said, it was all about the Benjamins is what she said. Mm. And she was blasted as an anti-Semite. Now, she may very well be like genuinely, you know, but in that particular instance, I remember going, I said, if I criticized how much money we gave to Germany, let's say, no one would ever accuse me of being a, a germaphobe, you know? <laughs> 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 Anti-germite. Yeah, anti-germite, um, you know. But for some strange reason, when it only, it's only one place on the entire earth that you can criticize what is a, a secular political issue in this particular instance. But because it is the homeland of the Jewish people and it's the Jewish state of Israel, that it's a it's an issue. So anyway, I'm going to I hate I'm germs, man. What is I that? hate germs. I hate germs. I really hate I hate germs, dude. Yeah, they're the worst. Of the course, they're rough and they get everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere. They're inside my gut. They're uh, <laughs> only ninety nine point nine percent of them get killed when I try and kill them. Uh, we, we'll need to have germs, a we'll, we'll have to have a convert, a Jewish convert on and talk about the Jewish question in a way that probably people don't genuinely hear because, you know, we're that cool. I would love to get E. Michael Jones on to talk. About OK, that, but, but people. Ah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Listen, when I okay, say moving me, the dial. Mm-hmm. When I say moving the dial, I, I you you bring certain people in and they get turned off. So, you know, and then ah, we, like this is what I was thinking about, like the whole like Kanye Nick Friday days kind of thing. I was like, listen, um, I I'm not. I'm not the biggest aficionado, I should say, of Nick Fuentes. I, just, I don't know. Neither I've, am I. The videos I've seen of him, I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I, he doesn't strike me as someone I'd, I'd particularly listen to. And I'm not saying that he's wrong or bad. I, I'm saying I don't know much about him, right? Equally, I don't know the ins and outs of Kanye's eccentric trains of thought. I will say this, that obviously Kanye is quite eccentric. What that means, I don't know. But what, well, like, I kind of know what that means. But when I see some of his criticisms, I go, okay, so a lot of this is if you don't know kind of a little history of black Protestantism, right? This, this idea that, that blacks were the original Hebrews, for instance, that's where you need to start at with this, with that kind of thinking. Otherwise, some of the stuff is not going to make any sense to anybody. And then on top of it, if you also think about the fact that Hollywood, most producers and stuff, both in music and in, in film, a lot of them have Jewish blood in them. Okay. So some of these criticisms are weird because Kanye is trying to thread a weird eccentric needle that's not working because the theology is all wrong. Um, right. Well, like that, like, you know, I'm not like, do we love Hitler? Well, God loves Hitler. Um, you know, that's and Catholics are called to love their enemies and pray for this persecute view. So you kind of can say it like that. And that's probably about where the period should end. You don't need to say elaborate anything else. Right. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do, my dude. It's not it's not there. Stop. You know, just shh, shh, right. Um, but, Although I'll say something controversial here. No, I, I you never think, say anything controversial, I think Rudy. Antarctic and Antarctic Kunz, which was the rounding up of degenerate art, was actually kind of based. This is kind of what we're talking about now, yeah. except, you know, we're talking about TikTok and we're talking about. Can I tell you who has emerged one of my favorite people to listen to? Who? I find Michael Knowles to be the greatest trad Trojan horse to ever exist <laughs> because the more That's I cool. listen to him, because he, he's got he, a great hairline, by the way. He's got a great hairline, by the way. Michael Knowles, if you're listening, uh, we invited you on the show once. You should come on now. We have more subscribers. Awesome. Thank you, people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but but I find that his his obvious conservatism um, has has met properly what traditionalism as Catholics ought to be. So for instance, now I'm finding an American conservatism, we'll totally do a different topic on this later. We'll get down the rabbit hole. But I like how he'll say things like, actually, book burning is not like a thing, first off, that the Nazis invented. And it's not, it's like the the Catholic Church had an index of banned books. Mm -hmm. And now not everything on there, I think was probably rightly put on there, but a lot of stuff that was on there, it's like, because this is dangerous to the faithful. Um, and you have to be very careful when you're talking about the sheep, because the reality of the matter is that um, is that sometimes the sheep, which is us, 
uh, need to be very, very careful about what we're reading, what we're putting into our bodies, obviously. And so I'm, I was kind of like, this is a pretty based thing because I, I'm not a libertarian, right? This libertarian perspective in conservatism is giving way to paleo conservatism, like traditionalism, because people are like, okay, so pornography is bad and it ruins people's lives obviously but i don't want to turn and be like well however though like if it's someone's right to freely express themselves and if they want to look at pornography what harm is done it's like it's obvious well, look if they if they all you know consent to this whole thing well, i don't right. see the problem here even though you know they're actually doing something that's destroying the culture that's right it's like yeah really it's like deal. i mean you don't have to look at it yeah exactly you don't have to look it's like okay it's destroying the culture let's stop there like that's an existential crisis also it's it's immoral can we is that still okay like i like how the the new argument for transgenderism is listen let's not get into this this scientific rational kind of thing our enemies laugh at what we do and say that's that's stupid that's wrong you shouldn't do that okay i'm gonna do that hey guy in a dress hey that's stupid that's wrong don't do that but the scientific basis no 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 it's 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 degenerate don't do it don't be a degenerate <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh, well man. consensus is social media is bad yes is yeah. social media the big gay or the big oof comment below <laughs> uh yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> we are grateful to all of our subscribers, both those who watch us video wise on YouTube, as well as those who, of course, listen to us on our a lot of different podcasting sites. Um, this has been such a fun time making the show. And so we're so grateful. We're very grateful to our patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, there are a lot of really kind of fun little perks that you could have that includes access to early episodes. Um, you can even have priority in episode suggestion, and you even have the opportunity to come on the show. Although a lot of our patrons don't bite at that. So we would love to have a guest on and tell us your stories of tradition or a topic of your choice uh, that you would like. Um, if you had, uh, if you like this video, if you liked what we had to say, we'd love to hear your own experiences on social media, pro and negative. Um, go ahead and comment down below. We love hearing your comments. We love when you email us. There's just a lot of interaction. See, not all social media is bad. There is interaction that is good. We we had our episode on swearing came because of a youth group uh, that we got via our Instagram, which was actually really really cool. So <laughs> <laughs> so please, we love yeah. it when you share these videos far and wide. So many of you guys have, and that's been helping us grow and and helping us reach new people and talk to new people which is kind of the most exciting thing that we could do um yeah. and and um i think that's it rudy am i missing anything yeah you know i just want to invite you dear listener to to share this with a friend if you if you thought this was interesting to you and you think maybe uh you want to share this with a friend it might be a good idea and uh it would help us to to get the word out with all kinds of different people so well, again we appreciate you listening and god bless you and mary keep you see you next time adios